Hello, everyone. I'm joined again by Vicente to talk about PSSs, Pod Security Standards, and a very awesome tool that you wrote. And you're going to show us exactly why PSSs have kind of a bit of an issue out of the box and what your tool did to fix that, right? Yes, that's right, Nathan. So give okay, us a quick me... demo of what happens when you use PSSs, the new way to secure your Kubernetes clusters. Yes. Uh, so about PSSs, um, by the way, as you were mentioning, we should tell people to check the previous video. So if I create this namespace that is going to be called an S restricted, I can label it uh, with this special label that says that I want to enforce the level restricted on it. So everything that is not compliant with that PSS level will be blocked. And I have several example files here. I could apply this bot YAML definition that is uh, baseline, not restricted. So just to clarify, uh, wait, you're creating... Oh, I did it wrong. I forgot to change the namespace. <laughs> oh, no worries. Let's change the namespace, right? So we apply okay. the pod. We apply the, apply the pod that's like not very secure. Um, yep. And we applied it first to the default namespace, so it worked. And now we're going to apply it to the NS restricted namespace that you created which you yeah. made a restricted namespace. So we won't be able to run this yeah. pod namespace, right? Yes, that's the idea. The pod is a very simple one, but restricted requires several additional things that are not here. So now when I try to apply it to the namespace, to write namespace this way, it gets blocked. And it's telling me, hey, this is the kind of things that are missing from the, for the pod to be able to run. If you want to see an example of a restricted pod, this is what a restricted pod should look like. And these are the kind of things that you should always uh, include in the in this kind of, of pod. Okay. And our other pod, our other pod didn't have those things, so you can't run it because it doesn't yeah. satisfy security. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what, what is the problem now? If this seems to be working very well, it's giving us information, but there is a problem because if we try to work with a deployment. We see the deployment being created, but if we check the content of the deployment, it's the same kind of pod specification we, we, we already had. So why so is we, that happening? If we apply the pod, then Kubernetes says, no, you can't do that because this pod doesn't have the mm -hmm. stuff necessary. But if we apply a deployment that has the exact same pod inside it as a template, then Kubernetes says, oh, well, the deployment itself is fine. Yeah. And it doesn't care that this deployment is going to try and create pods that aren't allowed. Yeah, because uh, strictly speaking, the admission control is blocking pods and it's checking pods. It's not checking anything else. So uh, deployment is not a pod, so it's completely fine to allow it. It's just the pods that it spawn or should spawn will not be created because they are the ones that will be blocked. But the problem is we don't see any error message at all. We don't see any information about that happening. But those pods, they're not actually running, right? Because they're, they're not allowed. No. As you see, the pods are not running there and you have to check the events, you have to check logs, you have to go through the security logs, you have to realize, hey, these pods are not being created because they they don't comply with the pod security standard level restricted. So how do we learn about this error earlier? That's why we are here to show the tool that we have developed that is called PSA Checker. That, you say uh, we, is... but I, I didn't develop that. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's you developed. me. Me and some colleagues of mine at Control Plane that are also helping. Let's start, for example, let's check first pod baseline for level restricted. It's going to tell me that specific file is not complying with that level. Uh, remember that this was the one that didn't have the things required for restricted. And it can also do the same with a deployment. And the interesting thing is that uh, it's not checking anything in the cluster, it's checking your static files. So now you have a way of doing this check before you deploy anything. And if I change this to baseline. So this is what everything call, is okay. This is what they call shift left, right? Thinking from left to right, that you start with the developer. The sooner you start checking things, the better. And with this, you can make sure that what you are preparing is compatible with the PSS level that you think you are going to use when you deploy and you are reach the cluster that is running without having to create any clusters. One example that I had prepared here 
is we can use Helm template to render a full Helm chart template with all the manifests we spawn when you deploy something. And instead of deploying it, it's just feeding up to the checker and see what kind of information it provides. The security guys I know would love this, right? You just take a Helm, any yes. Helm chart you want, and then you can see the, the compatibility with the- Anything that is, a, a, that is a, a YAML file, it will process it. And whenever it sees an object that can spawn pods for deployments, it's going to see things. So it's going to check everything that you provide. So just to summarize, like normally when you use PSSs, then if you roll out a pod that doesn't match the, the security standard, mm -hmm. then it gets blocked immediately and kubectl apply will fail. But if you roll out a deployment that will create the pod and the deployment succeeds and you're just missing pods in your cluster and that's annoying to troubleshoot. So what you did is you created a checker that you run it on any Kubernetes YAML, not just pods on deployments, jobs, or anything that even creates pods. And then you'll tell you in advance, this is going to have a problem. This is what you need to fix in order to match the standards. That's that's correct. I have to say, obviously, there are things that can alter what you deploy if you have mutating hooks and things like that. But the best practice in security that everybody is adopting is trying not to mutate things. So these kind of checks can be done, as you say, shifting less as soon as possible. Okay, so this seems like a really critical tool for everyone to have who's using PSSs in Kubernetes. And if anyone missed it, then check out our video where Vicente explains PSSs and also how they differ from pod security policies, PSPs. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Bye.